Welcome back. And now we would like to welcome Mr. Nata Pranu Nopakun, Thailand's Deputy Director General of the Department of Information and the Deputy Spokesman of the Foreign Affairs Ministry. We are honored to have you with us, sir. Good afternoon from Manila. Hello, good afternoon, Swadika. <laughs> okay, so please share with us how Thailand is taking care of its citizens during this time of the coronavirus pandemic from health and economic perspective, sir. Yes, sure. So first of all, of course, the um, personal uh, health uh, precautions that we've been repeating quite often, uh, washing hands, wearing masks, uh, keeping two meters of social uh, distancing, even even at, at home or in, in, in vehicles. Um, and of course, uh, we've announced a uh, curfew um, as well as a uh, flight ban, which has been extended until the end of, of, of May. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of economic assistance, um, there is the sort of like a cash uh, handout for those who are, are qualified, around uh, 5,000 baht uh, for three months um, for those who are qualified, as well as other, other measures in terms of uh, helping small businesses and everything because with the curfew and with the precautions, some um, businesses would have to be uh, closed most of the times. But we are relaxing those measures in the in, in part of uh, discussing um, essential uh, businesses, uh, mm -hmm. perhaps starting next week. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, some 35 of Thailand's 77 provinces, if I'm not mistaken, have not reported any cases in the last two weeks. Now, Bangkok and Phuket account for half of all the infections. Is this the basis for plans to ease the state of emergency and partial lockdown ban? Yes, yes, uh, it is a uh, part of the basis. Um, around half of the provinces of Thailand have not uh, seen new cases uh, in the past of 14 days. Mm -hmm. But, uh, I mean, we're, we're not satisfied. Of course, we want to be uh, more stringent, so we increase the number of days. So now we don't count 14 days. We want to count 28 days. So so half of the provinces, no, none in 14 days. So, so for 28 days, we have around 9 or 10 provinces, and, and we hope that it's going to go go up, um, provinces with no cases at all for 20, 28 days. Mm -hmm. And yes, uh, you mentioned, uh, that's correct, uh, Bangkok and Phuket, uh, Phuket where a lot of the uh, tourist and expat community uh, uh, live, mm -hmm. um, and of, of course a, a hub in, in southern uh, Thailand as well and in Bangkok. Mm -hmm. So we discovered that the most is by uh, close contact with uh, COVID infected people or from the various uh, clusters of, of the sources. Um, there was a uh, boxing stadium in Bangkok that, that was one of the main sources in the first week. Mm -hmm. uh, cases like um, those flying in from abroad um, and then not knowing that they were they had uh, COVID and, and, and they were in touch with uh, people. Mm -hmm. so, so these are the basis of our uh, measure. So we're relaxing some, but we're maintaining some as, as appropriate. So the curfew remains, but next week, as I mentioned, some businesses might be open, like um, they were talking about uh, barbers and hairdressers and mm -hmm. uh, some restaurants, uh, because they are essential. Because or else we'll we'll have we all have long hair. <laughs> so so we, um, we 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 will open some of these businesses, uh -huh. uh, but with uh, uh, rules like like this, for example, barbers. Um, we we will not have people lining up in barbers and guests have to come in, cut, and then leave. Th things like that. Just for mm -hmm. example. Mm -hmm. The uh, World Health Organization has recently reiterated the need for testing and contract tracing to be put in place before easing or considering easing city lockdowns. Could you give us an update on the progress of Thailand's test kits and contact tracing? Yes, yes. Um, well, I'm a diplomat. I'm not a public health uh, expert, but <laughs> from this uh, uh, crisis experience, we all have a learning curve. <laughs> so <laughs> that, that's very important that, that you mentioned, yes. So uh, contact tracing, we, we try to trace every contact, that, that's how to put it simply, uh, whether they came from abroad or uh, from which source uh, was mm -hmm. the first uh, infection and then who it was transferred to. Mm -hmm. So but to date, we have been, uh, been able to do contact tracing for, for almost all the cases. We know we know where it's from, that, that's what I mean. So it's from a flight in, on this X, X, X day from this country, Mm -hmm. This person was whatever, and then he was in contact. So, so we know the the, uh, the history behind each uh, one to date. Um, but the method that we do is uh, a cluster of um, people who are at risk, or we know have some we have some information about their possible risk. So we go straight to that cluster. So we call it active case 
finding and then test people in that active case uh, cluster. Uh, in, in, instead of uh, a mass testing for the whole population, which uh, may not be effective and uh, not, not doable now. So um, this kind of uh, uh, testing, I think there is the active case uh, testing of around 20,000 people per, per day, um, which I think compared to other countries, it might not be that, that high, uh, mm -hmm. but then it's uh, cluster based. So it might be more tar targeted, 20,000 uh, per, per day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, many are facing mental health challenges in these uh, strange and uh, uh, interesting times. People find it hard to adapt due to self-isolation, curfews, restrictions, and sometimes economic hardship. In the ASEAN countries and in some other countries, domestic violence has been reported to be on the rise. Does Thailand have a crisis center or hotline to address problems like these? Yes, uh, you're, you're, you're very right. Um, we have issues like these as well in terms of domestic violence because when you, you know, have to work at home or stay indoors, you know, it naturally uh, has to, you have to have uh, adaptation, for example. So uh, those cases, in terms of uh, violation of curfew uh, as well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we also have cases of um, people being stressed out. So the Department of Mental Health of Thailand um, is trying to address this issue. There was just one recent case last week of a woman who thought that she was not qualified for the uh, financial assistance that I mentioned. Mm -hmm. She thought that she was not qualified. So she went in to protest in front of the finance ministry and tried to commit suicide. Um, oh. So, and there were one or two other cases of, of uh, suicide as well because um, COVID has affected the livelihood and uh, income of, of, of people. So we're trying to address that. Um, we're trying to address uh, that in terms of having people be aware of uh, their what, what they, they have, you know, the, the blessings in life they have, mm -hmm. uh, firstly, of course, uh, the family that they have, the potential that they have, the strength that they have to, to fight uh, uh, COVID. And of course, with the financial assistance, um, we will, we will try to be as inclusive, we will try to be as inclusive as possible and not only have only one uh, financial assistance uh, scheme, mm -hmm. uh, other types of uh, schemes uh, as well. But of course, it's a, it has taken a toll, of course, on mental uh, health. We're trying to come out with uh, songs, cartoons, caricatures as well to have the general <laughs> population understand, you know, and, you know, not be too, too stressed out. Mm -hmm. uh, Join in the fight together, but with, with confidence, but not... Mm -hmm. So on the economic aspect, as you were talking about uh, on this crisis, we have learned that the government has also eased uh, electricity bills by uh, offering uh, discounts. Uh, I just read it in the news like uh, frugal households consuming under 150 units electricity won't have to pay anything. Uh, and uh, also, Prime Minister Pray Chanocha has written to 20 of the country's richest tycoons for help in addressing the socio-economic uh, impact of this pandemic. Uh, so I guess this is uh, how uh, Thailand is also uh, helping its citizens there. Yes, yes. So, so for uh, utilities, uh, for utilities, um, mostly water is not that expensive in Thailand, but electricity is. So mm -hmm. uh, for those who use lower than 150 uh, units, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if you make a watch or something, lower than 150, you, you won't have to pay. But if it's higher than 150, um, there will be a reduced uh, discount. And then higher than 800 units, which means like big houses, there will be another dis uh, discount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stay at home, work at home, of course, makes people have to spend more at home. <laughs> in terms of air conditioning, it's hot in Thailand. You know, in, in our ASEAN countries, it's always like tropical weather. So True. Also, yes. like, um, in terms of the uh, utilities, yeah, so that, that's what we're trying uh, to uh, address. Mm -hmm. uh, let's talk about tourism now. What are the plans for Thailand's famous tourism industry to bounce back in the short and medium term? Um, today I saw news that uh, Chinese tourists were interested in coming back very soon already to Thailand. But of course that will not be possible yet as, soon as, as long as the flight um, ban is, is still in place. Mm -hmm. So that's until the end of May at, at least first. But nevertheless, uh, we're preparing for a possible comeback. Uh, I'm not sure when. Um, there was a uh, survey saying that Thailand might be ready uh, by uh, for a comeback, but other countries might be ready in November. Uh -huh. But I'm not sure, very sure about that uh, assessment because there still has to be, our guard still has to be up. So if we open up too fast, that's a risk. 
But if we open up too slow, the tourist industry will be affected and all the businesses will be, be affected. So we just have to probably slow but sure, perhaps, and uh, find, find, find a balance. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we will really want uh, tourists to come back to, to Thailand because it's always been a big uh, tourist destination. 35, yes. 40, 40 million people per, 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 per year, many uh, Filipinos as well, of course. Uh, yes. <laughs> tourists and, and expats to, to Thailand. So we, we hope that uh, right now it's just a small uh, pa uh, temporary pause, I, I, I hope. But meanwhile, the Tourism Authority of Thailand has been coming out with like press or media uh, uh, products uh, as well. Mm -hmm. that, uh, it's just a temporary pause. It's the, the, the temples, the, uh, all the sites, all these uh, tourist sites are, are kind of empty or quiet now, but it's just temporary and they, the places are waiting for you to return. <laughs> that's, that's the, that's <laughs> mm -hmm. So uh, you touched upon the uh, financial aid and subsidy on but how are the migrant workers taken care of, given the several economic priorities of the Thailand government? Yes. So um, for migrant, well, the biggest the biggest group is of course the um, foreign migrant workers in terms of the labor, around three to four million in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And um, we've been taking care of them as we always have been. Uh, firstly, is we want to uh, them to uh, postpone uh, their mass uh, movement or or travel because mm -hmm. uh, last in the middle of this month uh, in April there was there was the Songkran festival in Thailand it's a big festival we're in uh, labor from Myanmar Laos Cambodia mm -hmm. three million four million they they wanted to return to their country to celebrate that festival because it's a common festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we wanted to persuade them not to because traveling to back to their countries would transport possibly um, the risk of, of, of COVID or back and forth so so in terms of the health uh, facilities and uh, uh, precautions, they have always been inclusive of the migrant community, um, the hospitals in some provinces with a big Myanmar uh, labor, where they may speak Myanmar language in, in, in the hospital. So it's been inclusive. Mm -hmm. And the uh, Thai owners of uh, uh, establishments or, or factories that, that hire these uh, migrants are also aware of the different rules that we have in place. You know, in terms of uh, compensation, if the company is, if the factory is closed, or if uh, salary is not to be um, is, is, is delayed, or you know, the things that things things are affected by by COVID. Mm -hmm. So the Thai factory owners are also aware of these measures. Uh, the business loans, uh, the paying debts, they they are uh, postponed. They are being assisted. Mm -hmm. uh, by by the government and uh, even uh, even tax filing uh, is also being postponed. The deadline is being postponed, and so that's for the labor uh, group. But for the expat uh, group uh, in in Thailand, there are a lot also you know uh, foreigners, Westerners, Asians, or Filipinos also. Mm -hmm. So the expat group in different sectors, um, I think they will uh, benefit from when, as I mentioned, when the businesses will be starting to open up again. As I mentioned, we're discussing that for next week, because if the restaurants are having closed or and have only delivery, like in the Philippines, mm -hmm. delivery food only, yes, uh, that that will make the staff have probably less working hours and less income. Mm -hmm. But for next week, but this week we're discussing it for opening for opening next week, mm -hmm. but with rules, just like the barber shop, mm -hmm. but with rules for restaurants that you can sit far from each other, blah blah, blah and all, all these details. Well, not not only the delivery, but we come back to the restaurant. For so, you know, Filipinos in restaurants in Thailand, uh, more work hours will be uh, in place uh, soon. Mm -hmm. If uh, there are Filipinos in, uh, I think there are many nurses, uh, uh, Filipino nurses in, in Thai hospitals as well, mm -hmm. or in the service industry, in hotels and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, so everything will come back in full bloom uh, soon next week. And so hoping that that will help the uh, foreign community in terms of work hours and their... Mm -hmm. um, but uh, in terms of the other benefits, of course, if it's a private sector, uh, we, we can't uh, go into that or touch that much if it's in terms of their salary and everything. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that our measures uh, are inclusive. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. summary. Mm -hmm. On a lighter topic, sir, um, how are the Thai people coping? Is it similar to most uh, other countries where remote working arrangements are the current mode and where social media, movie streaming takes up most of one's daily preoccupation? Yes, yes. So most of the Thais are uh, working from home. Uh, here, here in my office, it's around 50 percent. 
Mm -hmm. um, but uh, some of my friends in the private sector are saying that their bosses still want them to come to the office mm. uh, <laughs> uh, because of, uh, they, they're essential. They, they need to make money in, terms in, the, in the business sector. <laughs> I'm in the government sector, so it's uh, different. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so the service industry probably cut by half because it's only half kind of uh, service. But if it's like doing paperwork or, you know, uh, substantive policy stuff. We can do that at home with research and everything. <laughs> yeah, so, so hope, we hope to have like um, this become the new norm. I'm not sure if in the Philippines they're talking about this, the new normal uh, uh, in, in Thailand mm -hmm. uh, for the better, meaning that uh, everything we do now, we can continue it and not have crowded uh, restaurants, not be have much traffic, mm -hmm. uh, have uh, work from home uh, shifts. Make life uh, better and easier and, and healthier <laughs> and healthier as, as well because all this helps uh, for a new normal for. Mm -hmm. uh, sir, lastly, I, can you uh, would you like to give a message to uh, Filipinos, not only Filipinos but to everywhere around the world watching you right now? Uh, yes. so I hope that. So I hope that the uh, the. People in the Philippines or in Thailand will continue on with uh, this battle with the, with the common uh, enemy, uh, COVID. Uh, we're in the same boat. Tomorrow will be uh, better. And as I mentioned in every uh, press briefing that I have uh, at the COVID center here here in Thailand, mm -hmm. um, I mean we're we're one and the same. And the world is us, and we we are the world. I mean we're we're part of the same battle. So I think. We can overcome soon. Some countries might take longer. Some countries. A very good test, I think, for for humanity. Yes. Um, in in our lifetime, it's good that we have this test, and and we will overcome because we've been overcoming a long time. Mm -hmm. Cooperation in the ASEAN framework, in the UN framework, between countries, bilateral, and the humankind. Mm -hmm. We've always had many challenges: the Spanish flu, World War <laughs> One, World War Two, and everything. So I think it's. It's something that we look forward to, uh, to more, more strength. So I wish more strength and more power to people in the Philippines, uh, mm -hmm. in Canada as well, uh, mm -hmm. and in ASEAN and in the, in the, in the world. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, sir, for your time. And on behalf of Eagle Broadcasting Corporation, we thank you. And uh, we really appreci appreciate this time that you uh, have for us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.